Welcome to the Proto Art. Be sure to like and subscribe for new content. What's up, y'all? In this video, I'm going to try to make a LoRa file using Civit AI. I haven't really done this uh, too many times. I've tried this once before. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. With Civit AI, technically, it can be free to train a LoRa. You just need enough of these points. They call it buzz on their thing. You can either purchase it or people can kind of gift you buzz points and like rate your stuff and give you higher ratings to get more buzz. Uh, so first things first, you need at least 500, I believe. So I just have enough to train a model. So let's hope this works. Okay, so we're gonna click on a little button there. See a little number that we have. I'm going to go to the buzz dashboard. That's it. Okay, so from here, you can kind of see um, any thing you're rewarded. If someone gifts you the buzz, you can see that there's like a negative thing somewhere here. There it goes. So I tried training a model before. Turned out all right, it's not the greatest. So I'm gonna retry this again and record the whole process. Longest process is actually uh, writing the uh, captioning. So scroll down and you have a few options. Again, you can uh, tip an artist. They have bounties you can set up, which is interesting. We're gonna go to the train. So clicking, clicking on train now. In this window, you're gonna choose if you wanna create a character, a style or a concept. So I'm going for a style and I have my trigger word. So manually going through, tagging everything and having my trigger word in there. So at the bottom here, I'm just gonna select the eye on the right of these images, which I generated all these things and then hit next. So it's gonna take a little minute for this to upload. So as it says, creating and uploading archive. Okay, so now it has the name of the model, how many images, how many captions, uh, and then you can choose what you want here the, for the base model. Um, you can choose standard 1.5. Um, you have the option of the XL, which uh, people really love. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I'm debating which one I should do. I think I'm going to stick with the standard 1.5. And if this works really well, maybe I'll redo this with the Excel model. So advanced training settings, you can adjust the number of epochs, number of repeats, uh, batch size, steps, resolution, what type you want. So I want to make a LoRa. Okay, I guess that's the only option you have for this. Um, bucket, okay, I'm gonna leave those pretty much as is. I think I'm gonna increase the number of repeats to let's say, uh, notice as I'm adjusting this, it's also adjusting the number of steps uh, to like seven repeats and epochs. Uh, let me try, uh, how high can we go? Okay, let's do 16. You can leave it at default. You know, I'm just kind of experimenting, seeing how this will turn out. Batch size, I'm gonna leave it as is. Let's see how this looks. So then you press submit and then it's off to the races here. So I want to see what this optimizer thing is real fast. That's the only option we have. Okay, leave that as is. Cool, cool, cool. And then the learning rate, I guess I will leave that as it is. And yeah, so hit submit. So saying, are you sure that you want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> so your little balance will be adjusted there and it will take a little bit for this to finish. So hold tight and I'll be back. Okay, so in the next window, you can see the uh, results. So they'll have a preview window and the number of epochs you choose, basically you can download or publish that particular one that's uh, generated here. So these are the ones that were uh, made. So uh, you can like test these out on your own system first before you put it out there. And six doesn't look too bad and kind of comparing because some look better than others in different stages, right? So this is where the experimentation all comes into play. So you can't always tell by the thumbnail what the end result would look like because this is a LoRa file, waiting plays a huge factor in the end result. So I take each of these into the Fusion B and test them out. Sometimes I see some comments. It's, it doesn't happen often, but I do see it occasionally where it's just someone like, your models never work. I'm like, well, what are you doing? What are you prompting? Like a face. And then they are shocked when their stuff looks like bad in the end result. Um, like your prompting probably sucks. So you need to work on that. And there's a lot of videos. I made one on how to improve your prompting. 
in addition to that, there's usually a litany of other lores that are attaching to just the model itself. You'll notice like there's lores for adding detail, for the clothing, for the hair. Uh, usually if they're using like 1111, they have a little box you can tick that will improve the face in addition to everything else. So there's a lot of stuff that comes into play. It's not just, you can't put like a shoe <laughs> and have like a masterful looking image at the very end. There's like different things that to consider. Anyway, I'm going to take each of these into B and test these out. So back in Diffusion B, I have the uh, Dark Glow model, which was the original model. This is I'm trying to replicate same data set. Uh, it's just I trained this one in Diffusion B and there's currently no way to actually make just a lore file in Diffusion B. Um, you can merge models and import lore, but you can't extract it just yet. So this was the original data set trained in B to make this glow style model. Um, and this is the kind of lo the look we're trying to replicate. So starting from the bottom here at uh, 001, so that's in correlation with the epoch at one. So this is like what that would look in here at the like demo window. And just so I can kind of remember what this is supposed to look like, I'm, not, I'm gonna have this at the side here. Uh, so as we increase the epoch, so that was at epoch one, epoch two, three. And I started kind of getting more of the look I was going for originally around nine. So this is at eight and nine. We're starting to get that similar look with the sleeveless looking look the ripped uh, Darth Vader here. And increasing it to 10, really close to that look, 11. 12 and then like the detail and the look overall look really good to me at like uh honestly like the last epoch <laughs> so 15 and 16 so increase the look so again we got close to the look around nine the details and stuff really are popping at like 16 um uh, so i'd experiment with this a few different ways now, when you're testing your own, don't get discouraged because again, it's all about trial and experimentation here. So I tried one with like a Goku and I wasn't really loving the look, honestly, through any of these. Um, it felt like it was overfitting. Like that's when you get this like HDR kind of look, um, which I, I mean, I guess if that's the look you're going for, sure. But it just looks overly done. Uh, but. This is closer to the original image I was trying to replicate in that example <clears throat> from the thumbnail that you've seen in my other video, but didn't quite work out how I wanted it to, even at the highest like epoch setting. So next was this little alien head thing I was trying to replicate. And again, don't get discouraged if yours don't look, you know, phenomenal. And at the beginning here, as the epochs increase, the detail kind of comes more into play and more of the look I was going for. So again, closer towards seven starting to get there it's starting to look a lot better I actually look like that look it looks kind of crazy uh nine again now we're starting to get to the ballpark range i'm aiming for you know and then here's where it gets a little <laughs> frustrating is because i for me both of these look great nine and ten epochs look really good to me and as we start to increase this i notice it's starting to get darker and around the face um, but the details are like really, really cool around the like shoulders and neck area there. And then this is at like 12 and then 13 looks really cool to me. 14 looks really good. Uh, again, a lot of details in the shoulder and the neck area. Face looks really good too. And then 15 and 16. So again, 16 is the last little epoch I had trained there. So the next experiment was Mike Tyson. And again, this was trained with the original Dark Glow model in uh, Diffusion B. And then we have the epochs trying to replicate the look. So this is at one. And again, it gets closer to the look around nine, at least in my training set, yours might be different. I, you know, I changed my numbers around. So yours might look a lot closer earlier on. So nine starting to get there again. Uh, I'll keep this window open on the side here. So seven, eight, and this was at epoch nine. So this is the original look. This is at nine. Again, it's 
pretty close to that ballpark range. And then to me, some of this starts to look like it's overfitting. It gets the, again, that HDR, HDR look where it's like too sharp around the edges. It's almost like a haloing kind of thing. Uh, but again, that might be the look you're going for. Might work for you. 14 looks okay to me. Uh, do, 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 15 looks pretty cool. And then finally we're at Epoch 16. So I had skipped one, so this was Epoch 8 actually. Uh, which doesn't look bad. But I don't know, I'm torn. I kind of like 16, the last little Epoch. And then also earlier on in the, um, like 12, I think it was. Like playing around with this, I like Epoch 9, 10, 12, and 14 initially. And then when I started testing this out further, they all started kind of looking pretty good. So I tried doing this again with Bob Marley. And again, this is where you can get discouraged. Like, man, it doesn't look like it. Because <laughs> uh, this is the original Dark Glow one. Same seed number, same settings and everything. Um, but just was not replicating the look. And again, like, don't get discouraged because this was like the Bob Marley one I tried doing uh, with the original Dark Glow. And I wanted to replicate that look. But I couldn't with the Laura. Uh, so even, let's see. My computer's running a little slow because I'm also training another model right now. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Epoch 4, 5. And as it increased, it just started getting darker and darker and darker in the face. And I was like, oh no, I'm losing detail. So this was the original look I wanted to go for. And it just did not quite replicate that exactly. So even though the epoch worked at you know 16 for the other ones it doesn't always work so that's why you kind of have to experiment to like which one looks the best and then i'm training another model right now because i love traditional art and like cartoons um i like making that kind of look so i was making another one and i'm retraining this because i didn't really like how it turned out but while that's happening um what do you think do you have a favorite of the epochs here i'm gonna put out Epoch 16, I think, just because that one seems to be consistent and maybe Epoch 10. Super ripped Darth Vader kind of looks more like Shredder in this, honestly, but you know, I would like the little spiky stuff poking out the arms there. So this was Epoch 10. So this is the Epoch 16. Also, I ran another experiment, but some of these images aren't quite safe for work, <laughs> so I can't show all of it, uh, which is why you have the negative prompt stuff. And I can't show the other ones, but this was Epoch 10. Prompting plays a huge factor on top of your weights. Anyway, uh, let me know how your uh, results looked, what you used uh, this for. If you have like pictures of your stuff, that'd be awesome. And you can actually post those on the uh, Civit AI. Um, I'm going to wrap this up here. All right, y'all. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed, and I will talk to you soon.